All right, coaches, uh, we are going to take a look at our seven points of emphasis for our pitchers in 2016. This is the PowerPoint I used for them uh, a couple days ago to let them kind of know our overall philosophy, things we want them to be able to do, and it uh, really helps to solidify and give them a good focus for their uh, preseason and during season uh, work. So first thing we want them to do is we want to make sure they have athletic mechanics. We have gotten completely away from ideas and concepts such as balance points and uh, power position and things of those nature uh, of that nature. We want them to be as athletic as possible. So if they are, 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 I told them, I said, if you're 85 miles an hour from the outfield with control, we want you to be 83 miles an hour off the mound with control, not 77. And a lot of times pitchers lose that, uh, that velocity when they transfer to the mound because they become very rigid. They worry about throwing strikes. They worry about aiming the ball instead of just having athletic mechanics and throwing the ball. Uh, we want them to dominate decision counts, which are 0-0 and 1-1. And not just to dominate decision counts with their fastball and be able to throw strikes in those counts. We want them to be able to throw a variety of pitches. Our ultimate goal for our starters is that they have three pitches that they feel comfortable throwing in those counts. Fastball, uh, and really fastball to both sides of the plate, and then breaking ball and changeup as well. Um, the next point we want them to do is to dominate both sides of the plate. Really important for us that we are able to throw inside. We do not have guys that throw with a tremendous amount of velocity. You know, we have some guys who, for, for high school pitchers, who throw in the, in the low to mid 80s, and that's pretty decent velocity. But we don't have anyone who's in the upper 80s or 90 miles an hour. And so in order to make their fastball appear faster, we really have to be able to throw to the inside of the plate. The other thing that does is it makes hitters just a little bit uncomfortable. If you've ever, if you played and you've ever hit against a guy who you knew had no chance of throwing inside to you, you didn't feel uncomfortable at the plate. You didn't feel like there was anything you had to worry about. And again, we're not trying to, not trying to hurt hitters or hit them even, but uh, we, we want to make sure that we give them something to think about, let them know that we will come inside. And also it makes the fastball uh, maybe, maybe appear two to four miles an hour faster if it's thrown to the inside as opposed to the outside corner. Uh, we want to be able to throw change up in hitters counts. Uh, one of the things I'm working on for our elite members is I'm working on a change up course for them. Uh, it was really brought to my attention by one of our assistant coaches the other day. He said, you know, I've worked for a hand, played for and worked for a handful of college and, ba and high school baseball teams. And it was, you guys throw more changeups and command changeups better than anyone that, uh, that I've worked with or played with. And so I was, I'm going to put together something for our elite members, uh, a little changeup course for them so that they can teach their uh, pitchers how to throw changeups effectively, give them a little bit of an overview and uh, some drills to work with as well with throwing changeups. And the biggest thing for me is just don't give up on it. I tell our guys all the time, you know, you, you're going to have to throw a changeup because I call pitches and I'm going to call them. And so either I'm going to call changeups and you're either going to have success or you're not. And I know some of you might think, well, aren't you not? you know, playing to the strengths of your pitchers, but eventually that becomes a strength because they learn that I have to take throwing a changeup seriously. And then once they throw a changeup, now they have three solid pitches they can use. Uh, you got to have an O2 plan. Okay. A couple things we want to do. We want to make sure we have a setup. Maybe it's a high fastball. Maybe it's a, uh, f a breaking ball that drops out of the zone. Um, maybe it's a fastball just off the outside corner. Uh, if it's a fastball just off the outside corner, we want to make two decisions. We want to make the umpire make a decision, is it a ball or a strike? And it's got to be believable to the hitter. It's got to make the hitter think, is it a ball or a strike, should I swing at it? We usually, with that fastball, try to go four to six inches out. Sometimes in high school you get that call. Uh, sometimes in high school you get the, the batter to swing at it. Sometimes it sets up the next pitch. And what we've started doing this year with our guys is we've started – uh, having them throw that fastball at maybe uh, five to six miles an hour off. And so that slows down the hitter's eyes just a little bit. You see a fastball, you see fastball spin, you see fastball everything. Uh, it's about five to six miles an hour off. And then if we come back with the good fastball to try to get them out, it's just a little bit quicker, especially if it's thrown either up in the zone or, or inside. Um, we want them to take responsibility for their arm health. A lot of this has to do with communication. So we talked about where where pain is normal, what, what's sore and what's injured and what's things to be concerned about. Um, the big thing I told them was they have to just communicate with me. If something's not feeling right, they need to let me know. And I know a lot of coaches get upset and say, oh, none of my guys ever pitch because they all have stinking sore arms. Well, 
You know, I, I think that if we add a little, take a little bit more time to look at their arm health and put them on uh, a good arm strengthening program, make sure that they have a good long toss program, and also make sure that two way guys aren't overworked. You know, a lot of times we'll give our two way guys either a day off or just tell them, hey, play as light a catch as you need to today. Or maybe we, you know, this year for the first time in a while, we've got a shortstop and a center fielder who also are one of our, our couple of our top pitchers. And you know, we might play them at second base that next day, play a different kid at shortstop, let them DH. Um, we might let them play left instead of center. You know, something along those lines, or even just give them the day off afterwards. Uh, because really the ultimate goal is to have healthy pitchers heading into our postseason tournament. And so we need to make sure that they're communicating and that they have uh, that they have a healthy arm heading into the end of the uh, end of the year. So. Our final point of emphasis for our pitchers in 2016, which got and got cut off at the bottom, is to field their position. And this is something they oftentimes take for granted. They think it's always going to be easy, but there are certain plays they need to know and need to be able to do. Um, among them, the 1 6 3 double play. They need to be able to cover first base on a 3 1 put out. They need to be able to throw a bunt to third base, uh, so a 1 5 on a, on a bunt. They need to be able to uh, field their position on a comebacker. And something that happens more often than any of them is they've got to be able to back up bases properly. And something we ran into in the first couple of games this season was our pitchers literally standing right next to our catchers, thinking that they have backed up the base. The reality is they have to get in line with the throw and get way behind behind so that if something does get by that they are able to field it so those are our points of emphasis for our pitchers in 2016 thanks so much for being a cornerstone subscriber uh, you have a great day and never stop learning